Well, I was still at uh, Bloodstock 2017 with PlanetMosh.com. I'm joined by two two of the guys, with possibly the third on the way from Wolfhart. Yeah. Um, welcome to Bloodstock. Thank you. Thank you. Um, obvious question out of the way first. You played the Sophie stage a little earlier today. Yeah. Um, how was it from your perspective? How did uh, it go? Despite being, being really, really tired after the weekend, we already did Brutal Souls, Rockstar, oh. some really, really weird crappy shit with the flights with Air Serbia. Yeah. Never fly Air Serbia, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> That's a extreme kind of crap. Anyway, so despite being really like a lot more tired than normally would be with after these kind of festivals, it was really cool. One of the best crews we ever worked with. Like yeah. so super smooth, super cool. Yeah. Best best ending for this kind of weekend. I, must have, I guess that takes the pressure off you, just it, you can concentrate on, yeah, on yeah, yourself. And, especially yeah. battling with one air company which name I'm not going to mention because <laughs> it wouldn't be fair for Air Serbia <laughs> to do so. Yeah. But uh, it is really a place when you get to the festival, you are a little bit worn out after the weekend and then the crew takes over of everything and you just go on stage because it's not that conditions every festival. So, so you, you you get to appreciate the professional guys when you get to work with them because it's not, it's not always the case. And your stress levels can come down. Yeah, you the, yeah. Then you just only focus on the show, on your own part of the playing. So it's, it's a big issue actually. Yeah. You mentioned there the the hectic, to put it mildly, weekend that you've had. Yeah. Three festivals in one weekend is just insane. Yeah. Um, how how do you keep the the, the focus? the energy, the, the desire, how do you keep that at the maximum? With, with uh, shitty jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was coming to the same topic with a different angle, but the biggest, because now we've been past 30, and it is here, talking, uh, talking, talking the truth. For the past 30 hours, we've been only sleeping by sitting in a shuttle or airport or a plane or whatever, because we lost our hotel bookings, because we lost two flies, because so that's snowballs and snowballs. Yeah, of yeah. Air Serbia. No, not, not that we don't want to mention anybody or point any fingers. <laughs> but anyway, the biggest thing is like we, we have re we have really really good spirit inside the bar. So when things get really bit difficult, if everybody everybody gets tired. Nobody gets to be the whiny mimosa. So everybody still keeps the shitty jokes. That is a big deal. Yeah. Like when when you get really tired and you are surrounded by guys who only takes the edge off, not at that point, so... Yeah, that's important. Yeah, there's that's a good, good crew, like, effort is, is the biggest thing that makes you... Because, of course, you can't handle a one weekend without sleeping. Physically, you can do it. Any, any, any weekend you could do it, but to keep the spirit up, so it maintains to be fun, then you need the right kind of guys to do it with you. Absolutely, absolutely. As a band, you come across as a band that lives for the stage, you know, that's, you love playing live. Yeah. Has that always been the priority with Wolfhart? Do you always see yourself as live band first, recording band second, or have you got that perfect mix? It is, I think it's a perfect mix. I wouldn't, like, separate those, because it, it's a completely different thing when we go into writing mode, we go in studio, and when we go on stage. It's, it's always a, it's a different thing for the audience. They see us as a recording band that loves to be on stage. To us, it's a separate things. We focus on the album, only on the album, and then we do the show. So it's it, it. and it works. And yeah, it, 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 it works. Yeah. So tell us about the latest album then. How how long was that in the making? Presumably it was recorded in Finland, I guess. Was it yeah. Okay. So how long a process was that from writing to getting the finished project? Did it take it, longer than you were thinking? Or? Well, it was about a year. It's, it's the same thing. I, I already started writing songs for the new album, so it, it's not like it's very tight schedule. But it, it, the process starts quite early, and you start to get ideas. You're building the songs little by little, and uh, about like three or four months before the studio time, we start working with the songs together more tightly, and actually start the pre-production. So it takes about a year. But it's not like constant work around the year. So there's a lot of sort of stop, start, stop, start. Well, it's, it's, it's more like, like a, it's a it's a steady flow that you know widens 
towards the end. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And w when you're writing for an album, because sometimes you can write a fantastic song, but it might not fit with the rest of the album. Uh, were there any of, uh, of that nature on this one that you've sort of left off for now? It almost. It might have been, and there was a song called The Flood that we made the first, the second video also. Yeah. In my opinion, it took quite a long time that I even uh, played the song to the guys, the demo version, because I was so confident it's not going to fit. I'm, I was thinking already to have a side project or something. I've done a lot of those in the past. Yeah. So I, I really like the song, but I thought it's never going to fit on the album. I, I didn't think the guys are going to like it. But I, when I played the guys, the song to the guys, then they were everybody was like, of course, it has to be on the album. So I was like, well, we'll see. And there was actually one place in the track list that actually fits. But I, I was confident it's not going to fit, but luckily, luckily they told me otherwise. Because now when it's on the album, I think it's one of the most essential essential songs of the album altogether. So. Yeah, it's superb. And you also brought out a, ra a rather nice vinyl edition, didn't you, at Winterborn? Yeah. yeah. So have you always been fans of vinyl? Because it's, it's really good to see it on the up again now, isn't it? Actually, I've never been. I, I never owned a vinyl player. I never owned any vinyls except Winterborn. <laughs> and, yeah. and but I, I think it's a really good thing that the label sees the effort of doing these special things. And I know that there's a lot of people who really value the vinyl. So to me, it's, 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 it's uh, quite a big thing to be able to provide different type of products for people. Because if you're a vinyl lover and you only get to see it, it's not the same. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate that we have a label that makes it possible to have a different format of music for different listeners because basically my job ends when the song is written and the album is done. But uh, to be able to, you know, offer the same music in a suitable package for different people is a quite a big issue. And, and, it, and it looks really cool. Yeah, well that's I, the thing. It looks, it looks really that's cool. The thing. And to collect her, yeah. it's, it's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? You know? That was the thing with vinyl, it was almost like holding a piece of art, a yeah. painting. Yeah, and it, it, yeah. that's what I, what I realized first time when I when I saw the actual vinyl of Winterborn, then I really realized the beauty of the cover art. Because it's a different thing when you have the jewel case and the small booklet inside and you have the, this thing of plastic between there and then there's a rubber it's a different product completely. When you see the vinyl, you hold it like a poster, it comes alive completely in a different level also. So it increases the whole artistic, you know, point of view also. Now looking at the current run of dates, of live dates, it takes you up, I think, to about the middle of October, somewhere around there. Um, and what then, would you take a, a bit of a break? Well, there's going to be some winter festivals in uh, December. We didn't there's going to be some Russian gigs, which I can't say yet because it wasn't announced. It's going to be some... But you'll be flying on, not on a certain airline. No, no, <laughs> we're probably not going to... Without mentioning any air in... Air, no, sorry. Serbia, we had air in too, sorry. Let's put it on the same bucket. Yeah. Same shitty bucket, both. Never use them again. Just hate them all. It's yeah. easier. Finnair, fin we love Finnair. Oh, excellent, excellent. Not, not only because it's Finnish, but... Yeah, so you've no, got not these winter festivals coming up. Winter, winter festivals coming up. Some uh, mini, mini tour in Russia. We're going to do some more gigs in Europe that hasn't been Brilliant. announced yet. So it, it became to be quite busier than we thought. So we're going to take the break on January now. Uh, then we're going to do the 70 tons of metal cruise thingy. Yeah. This is going to be super cool. <laughs> and super hot. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're gonna, we, can, we have planned this sauna training season for the winter so we get adjusted <laughs> for the heat so it's all in the planning it doesn't come as a surprise at all and then hopefully on next march we're gonna be in studio making the next album already that would be the ideal yeah, if things all go to yeah. plan yeah that doesn't really give you much time off maybe one month the thing is like we still have them uh, like regular jobs and to us the band the getting together as a, as a band is like the the what is the highlight of the yeah. day or the month or the yeah. week yeah. it's like the, the quality time so we don't really want to take time off and you know if we do the cruise in february and we go in studio in march 
that doesn't really qualify as work. No, no, no. Life could be much harder. Well, it could be <laughs> quite much harder. So we better. Uh, I see it better that we don't need to take any break. So we have a constant motion. Things are moving forward. So. Well, I was going to ask whether you get a chance to check out a festival, but with your schedule at the minute, I guess it's come in, do the show, on to the next, isn't it, really? Well, now we have some free time, actually, but yeah. the, the Roma Romanian trip was horrible. We don't, we're not going to go into flight details, but we lost two flights, not because of us. We were, what, 14 hours late yeah. of the schedule. It's half a the, day gone. Yeah, then. the festival... Managed, they had a new slot for us. We played after Carcass two o'clock in the morning, but they, they made it happen, so it was really cool for them. Uh, they they agreed to arrange a shuttle, even though the promoter thought like, we not going to make it. But we landed 14 hours later than we were supposed to. We changed the stage clothes, we were changing swings inside the car while driving. We get to the festival 20 minutes before the show, and yeah. we had to. We had to jump back to the car 15 minutes after the show so we could get this flight to get here. So now it's easy. But you're here. Now, yeah, yeah we're here. Now, and now it's easy. Now we can do interviews, we can chill out. There's a hotel, there's a bed to sleep in. But it was a rough. <laughs> rough. You can actually lay down. Flat. Yeah, in a horizontal yeah, 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 level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, for hours, so. Brilliant. Well, obviously, I was going to say best of luck with the set, but I mean, it's second nature to you now, so I'm, yeah. sure, I'm <laughs> sure it'll go fantastic. And thank you so much for taking time to speak to us, and uh, we'll look forward to the new stuff next year, whenever. Best of luck on that cruise. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, don't fly Air Serbia. <laughs> <laughs>